Dan Ash of BA Guitar and Tuition and welcome to another tutorial video. In today's video we're going to be looking at the guitar stylings of Abath Doom Occulta and giving you a few examples of some of his unique guitar stylings with chord inversions, ribbon studies and also a couple of sound light tracks. But before we get started what we're going to do is get ourselves tuned up into D Concert which is going to be a whole tone down from what we did before and we'll see you in a moment. So stick around and rock on. Okay, the setup's a little bit different to the previous video. What I'm using now is a Court VXV4, and it's a flying V, and um, the great thing about this particular design is that, like we were talking before about using the classical stance to actually get the pivot on the neck, because of the actual design on this particular guitar, having the actual cutaway on here, it naturally sits into your right leg, if you're right-handed, uh, very, very comfortably, and with the actual uh, position of the body being supported, for example, on the left leg. You've got that natural classical stance there as well, which helps actually creating less resistance on the picking hands. You don't have to put a curl. Guitar is nice and up front, so you can see what you're doing. And also, it helps with the actual drop of the wrist, so you've got too many curls through there as well. Nice, subtle bends, so you can actually get a lot wider stretch and um, move about the guitar pretty fluently. Like EMG passive pickups, which are going to be reflective of the setup that Abaf uses, which is the Seymour Duncan passives, um, which tend to have a little bit more clarity than, let's say, active pickups, which can be just a little bit unwieldy. Um, when you're doing more colourful chords, you want that little bit of separation, so that helps. And also, within the amp I'm using, the Marshall Valve State 8080, the gain settings will be gain up at full, bass up to around 4 o'clock, middle to around 10, treble up full, contour between 4 and 5, and a moderate volume around 1 o'clock. Not really too different to the previous setup, but uh, what I'm doing is backing off the middle a wee bit and just putting a little bit more contour, a little bit more treble, just to kind of give it that really tight, compressed feel to it. Um, with the bass stylings, he was much more akin to a lot of, let's say, the German thrash players, such as um, bands like Destruction, Sodom and Creator. And uh, within that, the um, guitar stylings are just that little bit more refined and just have that little bit, it's like more control guitar sound rather than a wheelie sound like we had before. Because the way Abaf um, tends to play um, against, let's say, the stylings of Demoners is that he's much more inspired by, um, let's say, uh, the more 80s technically proficient guitarists like uh, Randy Rhodes. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, um, even a little bit of Ace Freely, though I wouldn't really class him as technical. Um, but he's very, very much a rock inspired guitar player, and you can really tell that by the actual techniques he starts to imply, which is a little bit more refined and um, a little less use of, let's say, 16th note triplets and 32nd notes, and bringing the tempos down a little bit more, which actually give a nice respite for the picking hand so it's not so relentless and uh, it just makes everything just sing a little bit cleaner and if anything have quite a catchy edge to it which is uh, not always synonymous with black metal um, unless you're going to look at bands like say Great Lavil or Demi Borger which is more the symphonic side of things um, whereas Mortal still managed to keep it relatively true but having a um, slightly more commercially refined edge and uh, a little bit more proficient technique thrown into the guitar playing side of things.
What we're going to look at now is the extension from dyads into triads into the immortal sound. Now, in the early days, um, what demonas would do uh, would predominantly just use straight power chords, maybe with an extended fifth, going into, let's say, the minor dyad with the flat third, going into the major third. But what a bath would do would still keep those uh, elements within the songwriting because it's quite a key part of the immortal sound. But what it would do was actually um, start to extend, let's say, the octave of the root with the pinky, for example. <laughs> Put the octave on top. And that gave it much more breadth to the actual chord, a lot more colour. Then the minor context. Get something a little bit like this happening. One of the things that Bath would do to extend some of the chord forms was use a thing called the cage system, and this is where we actually take all our principal chords. If you spell the word cage, you've got C. If you actually join all those shapes up in a set key, you get a whole bunch of different inversions of the same chord. So, for example, if I spell out K starting C, these are the shapes you have. system going all the way through the neck pretty much right up to the next octave and um, what a bath would do was rather than actually taking a chord progression such as let's say D5 and C5 and just moving it down like that what he would do that's a really classy way you'd actually just bring that down to get the G shape you actually get your next chord along. So rather than straight fifth chords, you end up getting that minor triad underneath, which gives it a really menacing form. And also, minimal movement. So that stops you from racing about all over the neck. It's more of a jazzer approach. Not just minimal movement, but getting big, colourful chords. So what you can do is uh, take a number of these shapes, just going through, system um, but rather than actually keep it all in the same key just see how many of these shapes and the sort of forms you can get in one set position so let's say if I bass around the seventh fret so I've got all my open strings I can play against that same progression but put them all into minors. And then if you just put a bit of drive on top of that, you get something a bit like this.
take, let's say, a conventional thrash rhythm where you actually put, say, um, a ringing accent on a chord, uh, let's say, of E5, and then, let's say, uh, a run of, just say, 16ths, for example, on um, the low E. <laughs> actually having the movement of the 16s on the low E, who actually put the movement on the actual chord. Now we put some of the encoding versions we talked about earlier. The key thing is not to be too contrived with it, it's just to have fun, try playing around with some of these shapes. come up with, but there's some really interesting stuff you can do here. Compared to the early works of Immortal, um, Abbas started to bring in a lot more refined melody into the songs, and rather than to have to thrash your way through all these chords at a blistering pace, it was actually bring things down a little bit, and also range your guitar tones. Rather than just having distortion tones all the time, what he started to use was a lot more clean interludes and also clean middle eights. A little bit like um, what we heard in um, Blash It, Mighty Raven Dark from Battles of the North, but keeping that theme running so that you actually get the sweet and sour between the really visceral, nasty, driven stuff and then having some you know, very, very introspective, clean interludes. So here's a couple of examples of the sort of things that a bath would do. <laughs> straightforward and not really fitting any particular uh, trad pattern that's say like uh, uh, a 645 or let's say um, a 251 or 145 um, it literally is just having a keen ear of listening to that melodic note and then just thinking about what other chord passages are close by that I can actually envelope on top of that note pure novice approach to songwriting but obviously from an artistic point of view and a critical point of view we've got a lot of more technical um, pieces out of that but that's something that's very very common um, within a lot of the um, immortal breakdowns so there you go <laughs> Okay folks, that wraps up the tutorial on Immortal Sound and I hope you found it insightful and if you want any more information on the band just click up the link here and you'll be taken to the band's official YouTube channel which will document um, live footage, music videos and interview clips. And also the um, D. McCulter brothers have also done various different side projects such as I and also the self-titled Demon Ants project. Really worth checking out if you're into any of the uh, latter period from the heart of winter onwards. Really worth good stuff. And also a big thanks out to um, Mark and Jason from the Rec Room Podcast for actually suggesting to do these videos in the first place. They've been pretty challenging, but um, I think they've been worthwhile. And actually put a shout out to um, my first video as well in the last podcast, which was pretty cool. And if there's any suggestions for any further videos, please just drop a link in the bar. Alternatively, visit my YouTube channel and um, I'll see what I can do. But in the meantime, folks, keep rocking, stay inspired. We'll see you all soon. <laughs>